The estates of the realm, or three estates, were the broad orders of social hierarchy used in Christendom Christian Europe, from the medieval period to early modern Europe. Different systems for dividing society members into estates developed and evolved over time. The best known system is the French Ancient Regime, Old Regime a three estate system used until the French Revolution. 1789 -1799. Monarchy was for the king and the queen, and this system was made up of clergy, the first estate, nobles, the second estate, and peasants and bourgeoisie. The third estate. In some regions, notably Scandinavia and Russia, burghers the urban merchant class and rural commoners were split into separate estates, creating a four-estate system with rural commoners ranking the lowest as the fourth estate. Furthermore, the non-landowning poor could be left outside the estates, leaving them without political rights. In England, a two-estate system evolved that combined nobility and clergy into one lordly estate with «commons» as the second estate. This system produced the two Houses of Parliament, the House of Commons and the House of Lords. In southern Germany, a three-estate system of nobility princes and high clergy, ritters, knights, and burghers was used. Today the terms three estates and estates of the realm may sometimes be reinterpreted to refer to the modern separation of powers in government into the legislature, administration, and the judiciary. Additionally the term fourth estate usually refers to forces outside the established power structure evoking medieval three estate systems, most commonly in reference to the independent press or media. Historically, in northern and eastern Europe, the fourth estate meant rural commoners. <laughs> <laughs> Social mobility During the Middle Ages, advancing to different social classes was uncommon and very difficult. The medieval church was an institution where social mobility was most likely up to a certain level generally to that of vicar general or abbot, abbess for commoners. Typically, only nobility were appointed to the highest church positions bishops, archbishops, heads of religious orders, etc., although low nobility could aspire to the highest church positions. Since clergy could not marry, such mobility was theoretically limited to one generation. Nepotism was common in this period. Another possible way to rise in social position was due to exceptional military or commercial success. Such families were rare and their rise to nobility required royal patronage at some point. However, because noble lines went extinct naturally, some ennoblements were necessary. Dynamics Medieval political speculation is imbued to the marrow with the idea of a structure of society based upon distinct orders," Johann Hazinga observes. The virtually synonymous terms estate and order designated a great variety of social realities, not at all limited to a class, Hazinga concluded applying to every social function, every trade, every recognizable grouping. There are, first of all, the estates of the realm, but there are also the trades, the state of matrimony and that of virginity, the state of sin. At court there are the four estates of the body and mouth, bread masters, cup bearers, carvers, and cooks. In the church there are sacerdotal orders and monastic orders. Finally there are the different orders of chivalry. This static view of society was predicated on inherited positions. Commoners were universally considered the lowest order. The higher estate's necessary dependency on the commoner's production, however, often further divided the otherwise equal common people into burghers also known as bourgeoisie of the realm's cities and towns, and the peasants and serfs of the realm's surrounding lands and villages. A person's estate and position within it were usually inherited from the father and his occupation, similar to a caste within that system. In many regions and realms there also existed population groups born outside these specifically defined resident estates. Legislative bodies or advisory bodies to a monarch were traditionally grouped along lines of these estates, with the monarch above all three estates. Meetings of the estates of the realm became early legislative and judicial parliaments. Monarchs often sought to legitimize their power by requiring oaths of fealty from the estates. Today, in most countries, the estates have lost all their legal privileges, and are mainly of historical interest. The nobility may be an exception, for instance due to legislation against false titles of nobility. Similarly British government well maintains the distinction witness its House of Lords, and the House of Commons. One of the earliest political pamphlets to address these ideas was called, What is the Third Estate? 
French, KCEK Le Tiers Etat, it was written by Abbé Emmanuel Joseph Sillas in January 1789, shortly before the start of the French Revolution. Background After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, numerous geographic and ethnic kingdoms developed among the endemic peoples of Europe, affecting their day-to-day -day secular lives, along with those, the growing influence of the Catholic Church and its papacy affected the ethical, moral and religious lives and decisions of all. This led to mutual dependency between the secular and religious powers for guidance and protection, but over time and with the growing power of the kingdoms, competing secular realities increasingly diverged from religious idealism and church decisions. The new lords of the land identified themselves primarily as warriors, but because new technologies of warfare were expensive, and the fighting men required substantial material resources and considerable leisure to train, these needs had to be filled. The economic and political transformation of the countryside in the period were filled by a large growth in population, agricultural production, technological innovations and urban centers. Movements of reform and renewal attempted to sharpen the distinction between clerical and lay status, and power, recognized by the church also had their effect. In his book The Three Orders, Feudal Society Imagined, the French medievalist Georges Duby has shown that in the period 1023-1025 the first theorist who justified the division of European society into the three estates of the realm was Gerard of Florence, the Bishop of Cambrai. As a result of the investiture controversy of the late 11th and early 12th centuries, the powerful office of Holy Roman Emperor lost much of its religious character and retained a more nominal universal preeminence over other rulers, though it varied. The struggle over investiture and the reform movement also legitimized all secular authorities, partly on the grounds of their obligation to enforce discipline. In the 11th and 12th centuries, thinkers argued that human society consisted of three orders those who pray, those who fight, and those who labor. The structure of the first order, the clergy, was in place by 1200 and remained singly intact until the religious reformations of the 16th century. The very general category of those who labor specifically, those who were not knightly warriors or nobles diversified rapidly after the 11th century into the lively and energetic worlds of peasants, skilled artisans, merchants, financiers, lay professionals, and entrepreneurs, which together drove the European economy to its greatest achievements. The second order, those who fight, was the rank of the politically powerful, ambitious, and dangerous. Kings took pains to ensure that it did not resist their authority. By the 12th century, most European political thinkers agreed that monarchy was the ideal form of governance. This was because it imitated on earth the model set by God for the universe, it was the form of government of the ancient Hebrews and the Christian biblical basis, the later Roman Empire, and also the peoples who succeeded Rome after the 4th century. <laughs> Kingdom of France France under the ancient regime before the French Revolution divided society into three estates, the first estate clergy, the second estate nobility, and the third estate commoners. The king was considered part of no estate. <laughs> first estate The first estate comprised the entire clergy, traditionally divided into «higher» and «lower» clergy. Although there was no formal demarcation between the two categories, the upper clergy were, effectively, clerical nobility, from the families of the second estate. In the time of Louis XVI, every bishop in France was a nobleman, a situation that had not existed before the 18th century. At the other extreme, the lower clergy, about equally divided between parish priests, monks, and nuns, constituted about 90% of the first estate, which in 1789 numbered around 130,000, about 0.5% of the population. Topic: <laughs> Second Estate. The second estate FR, etat, was the French nobility and technically, though not in common use royalty, other than the monarch himself, who stood outside of the system of estates. The second estate is traditionally divided into noblesse d'épée, nobility of the sword, and noblesse de robe, nobility of the robe, the magisterial class that administered royal justice and civil government. The second estate constituted approximately 1.5% of France's population. Under the ancient regime, old rule, old government, 
The second estate were exempt from the corvée royale forced labor on the roads and from most other forms of taxation such as the gabelle salt tax and most important, the talé the oldest form of direct taxation. This exemption from paying taxes led to their reluctance to reform. Third estate The third estate comprised all of those who were not members of the above and can be divided into two groups, urban and rural, together making up 98% of France's population. The urban included wage labourers. The rural included free peasants who owned their own land who could be prosperous and villains serfs, or peasants working on a noble's land. The free peasants paid disproportionately high taxes compared to the other estates and were unhappy because they wanted more rights. In addition, the first and second estates relied on the labor of the third, which made the latter's unequal status all the more glaring. There were an estimated 27 million people in the third estate when the French Revolution started. They had the hard life of physical labor and food shortages. Most were born within this group and died as a part of it, too. It was extremely rare for people of this ascribed status to make it out into another estate. Those who did so managed as a result of either being recognized for their extraordinary bravery in a battle or entering religious life. A few commoners were able to marry into the second estate, but this was a rare occurrence. Topic. Estates general The first estates general not to be confused with a class of citizen was actually a general citizen assembly that was called by Philip IV in 1302. In the period leading up to the Estates General of 1789, France was in the grip of an unmanageable public debt nearly 3.56 million livres. In May 1776, Finance Minister Turgot was dismissed, after failing to enact reforms. The next year, Jacques Necker, a foreigner, was appointed Controller General of Finance. He could not be made an official minister because he was a Protestant. Terrible inflation and widespread food scarcity, a huge famine in the winter of 1788 to 89. This led to widespread popular discontent and produced a group of third estate representatives, 612 exactly, pressing a comparatively radical set of reforms, much of it in alignment with the goals of finance minister Jacques Necker, but very much against the wishes of Louis XVI's court and many of the hereditary nobles forming his second estate allies, at least allies against taking more taxes upon themselves and keeping the unequal taxation on the commoners. When he could not persuade them to rubber stamp his ideal program, Louis XVI sought to dissolve the Estates General, but the Third Estate held out for their right to representation. The lower clergy and some nobles and upper clergy eventually sided with the Third Estate, and the king was forced to yield. Thus, the Estate General meeting was an invitation to revolution. By June, when continued impasses led to further deterioration in relations, the Estates General was reconstituted first as the National Assembly June 17, 1789, seeking a solution for the realm independent of the King's management of the meetings of the Estates General which occasionally continued to meet. These self-organized meetings are today defined as the epic event beginning the historical epic era of the French Revolution, during which, after several more weeks of civil unrest, the body assumed a new status as a revolutionary legislature, the National Constituent Assembly July 9, 1789, this unitary body composed of the former representatives of the three estates stepping up to govern along with an emergency committee in the power vacuum existing after the Bourbon monarchy fled Paris. Among the assembly was Maximilien de Robespierre, an influential member of the Jacobins who would years later become instrumental in the turbulent period of violence and political upheaval in France known as the Reign of Terror, the 5th of September 1793 to the 28th of July 1794. Topic: <laughs> United Kingdom Whilst the estates were never formulated in a way that prevented social mobility, the English subsequently the British Parliament was long based along the classic estate lines being composed on the Lords Spiritual and Temporal, and Commons. The tradition where the Lords Spiritual and Temporal sat separately from the Commons began during the reign of Edward III in the 14th century. Notwithstanding the House of Lords Act 1999, the British Parliament still recognises the existence of the three estates, the Commons in the House of Commons, the nobility Lords Temporal in the House of Lords, and the clergy in the form of the Church of England bishops also entitled to sit in the Upper House as the Lords Spiritual. 
Topic: Scotland. The members of the Parliament of Scotland were collectively referred to as the Three Estates Older Scots, Thre Estitus, also known as the Community of the Realm, and until 1690 composed of the First Estate of Prelates bishops and abbots, the Second Estate of Lairds dukes, earls, parliamentary peers after 1437 and lay tenants-in-chief, the third estate of borough commissioners representatives chosen by the royal boroughs the first estate was overthrown during the Glorious Revolution and the accession of William III. The second estate was then split into two to retain the division into three. A shire commissioner was the closest equivalent of the English office of Member of Parliament, namely a commoner or member of the lower nobility. Because the Parliament of Scotland was unicameral, all members sat in the same chamber, as opposed to the separate English House of Lords and House of Commons. The Parliament also had university constituencies see Ancient Universities of Scotland. The system was also adopted by the Parliament of England when James VI ascended to the English throne. It was believed that the universities were affected by the decisions of Parliament and ought therefore to have representation in it. This continued in the Parliament of Great Britain after 1707 and the Parliament of the United Kingdom until 1950. Topic: <inaudible> Sweden and Finland. The estates in Sweden, including Finland, and later also Russia's Grand Duchy of Finland were the two higher estates, nobility and clergy, and the two lower estates, burghers and landowning peasants. Each were free men, and had specific rights and responsibilities, and the right to send representatives to the Riksdag of the estates. The Riksdag, and later the Diet of Finland was tetracameral, at the Riksdag, each estate voted as a single body. Since early 18th century, a bill needed the approval of at least three estates to pass, and constitutional amendments required the approval of all estates. Prior to the 18th century, the king had the right to cast a deciding vote if the estates were split evenly. After Russia's conquest of Finland in 1809, the estates in Finland swore an oath to the emperor in the Diet of Parvu. A Finnish house of nobility was codified in 1818 in accordance with the old Swedish law of 1723. However, after the Diet of Parvu, the Diet of Finland was reconvened only in 1863. In the meantime, for a period of 54 years, the country was governed only administratively. There was also a population outside the estates. Unlike in other areas, people had no default estate, and were not peasants unless they came from a landowner's family. A summary of this division is Nobility see Finnish nobility and Swedish nobility was exempt from tax, had an inherited rank and the right to keep a fief, and had a tradition of military service and government. Nobility was codified in 1280 with the Swedish king granting exemption from taxation frails to landowners that could equip a cavalryman or be one themselves for the king's army. Around 1400, letters patent were introduced, in 1561 the ranks of count and baron were added, and in 1625 the house of nobility was codified as the first estate of the land. Following Axel Oxenstierna's reform, higher government offices were open only to nobles. However, the nobility still owned only their own property, not the peasants or their land as in much of Europe. Heads of the noble houses were hereditary members of the Assembly of Nobles. The nobility is divided into titled nobility counts and, barons and lower nobility. Until the 18th century the lower nobility was in turn was divided into knights and esquires such that each of the three classes would first vote internally, giving one vote per class in the assembly. This resulted in great political influence for the higher nobility. Clergy, or priests, were exempt from tax, and collected tithes for the church. After the Swedish Reformation, the church became Lutheran. In later centuries, the estate included teachers of universities and certain state schools. The estate was governed by the state church which consecrated its ministers and appointed them to positions with a vote in choosing diet representatives. Burghers were city dwellers, tradesmen and craftsmen. Trade was allowed only in the cities when the mercantilistic ideology had got the upper hand, and the burghers had the exclusive right to conduct commerce within the framework of guilds. Entry to this estate was controlled by the autonomy of the towns themselves. Peasants were allowed to sell their produce within the city limits, but any further trade, particularly foreign trade, was allowed only for burghers. 
In order for a settlement to become a city, a royal charter granting market right was required, and foreign trade required royally chartered staple port rights. After the annexation of Finland into Imperial Russia in 1809, mill owners and other proto-industrialists would gradually be included in this estate. Peasants were land owners of land-taxed farms and their families, which represented the majority in medieval times. Since most of the population were independent farmer families until the 19th century, not serfs nor villains, there is a remarkable difference in tradition compared to other European countries. Entry was controlled by ownership of farmland, which was not generally for sale but a hereditary property. After 1809, Swedish tenants renting a large enough farm ten times larger than what was required of peasants owning their own farm were included as well as non-nobility owning tax-exempt land. Their representatives to the Diet were elected indirectly, each municipality sent electors to elect the representative of an electoral district. To no estate belonged propertyless cottagers, villains, tenants of farms owned by others, farmhands, servants, some lower administrative workers, rural craftsmen, traveling salesmen, vagrants, and propertyless and unemployed people who sometimes lived in strangers' houses. To reflect how the people belonging to the estates saw them, the Finnish word for obscene. Sauditan, has the literal meaning, estateless. They had no political rights and could not vote. Their mobility was severely limited by the policy of legal protection. Finnish, Leilinen Suagelu, every estateless person had to be employed by a taxed citizen from the estates, or they could be charged with vagrancy and sentenced to forced labor. In Finland, this policy lasted until 1883. In Sweden, the Riksdag of the Estates existed until it was replaced with a bicameral Riksdag in 1866, which gave political rights to anyone with a certain income or property. Nevertheless, many of the leading politicians of the 19th century continued to be drawn from the old estates, in that they were either noblemen themselves, or represented agricultural and urban interests. Ennoblements continued even after the estates had lost their political importance, with the last ennoblement of explorer Sven Hedin taking place in 1902. This practice was formally abolished with the adoption of the new constitution January 1, 1975, while the status of the House of Nobility continued to be regulated in law until 2003. In Finland, this legal division existed until 1906, still drawing on the Swedish constitution of 1772. However, at the start of the 20th century most of the population did not belong to any estate and had no political representation. A particularly large class were the rent farmers, who did not own the land they cultivated but had to work in the landowner's farm to pay their rent unlike Russia, there were no slaves or serfs, furthermore, the industrial workers living in the city were not represented by the four estate system. The political system was reformed as a result of the Finnish general strike of 1905, with the last Diet instituting a new constitutional law to create the modern parliamentary system, ending the political privileges of the estates. The post-independence constitution of 1919 forbade a noblement, and all tax privileges were abolished in 1920. The privileges of the estates were officially and finally abolished in 1995, although in legal practice, the privileges had long been unenforceable. As in Sweden, the nobility has not been officially abolished and records of nobility are still voluntarily maintained by the Finnish House of Nobility. In Finland, it is still illegal and punishable by jail time up to, one year to defraud into marriage by declaring a false name or estate Rikoslaki 18 Luku Section 1, Straflagen 18 Cap. Section 1 <laughs> Low countries The Low Countries, which until the late 16th century consisted of several counties, prince bishoprics, duchies etc. in the area that is now modern Belgium, Luxembourg and the Netherlands, had no states general until 1464, when Duke Philip of Burgundy assembled the first states general in Bruges. Later in the 15th and 16th centuries Brussels became the place where the states general assembled. On these occasions deputies from the states of the various provinces as the counties, prince bishoprics and duchies were called asked for more liberties. For this reason, the states general were not assembled very often. As a consequence of the Union of Utrecht in 1579 and the events that followed afterwards, the states general declared that they no longer obeyed King Philip II of Spain, who was also overlord of the Netherlands. 
After the reconquest of the Southern Netherlands roughly Belgium and Luxembourg, the States General of the Dutch Republic first assembled permanently in Middelburg, and in The Hague from 1585 onward. Without a king to rule the country, the States General became the sovereign power. It was the level of government where all things were dealt with that were of concern to all the seven provinces that became part of the Republic of the United Netherlands. During that time the States General were formed by representatives of the states i.e. provincial parliaments of the seven provinces. In each states a plural tantum sat representatives of the nobility and the cities the clergy were no longer represented, in Friesland the peasants were indirectly represented by the Grietmannen. In the southern Netherlands, the last meetings of the States General loyal to the Habsburgs took place in the Estates General of 1600 and the Estates General of 1632. As a government, the States General of the Dutch Republic were abolished in 1795. A new parliament was created, called Nationale Vergadering National Assembly. It no longer consisted of representatives of the states, let alone the estates, all men were considered equal under the 1798 constitution. Eventually, the Netherlands became part of the French Empire under Napoleon 1810, La Hollande est réunie à l'Empire. After regaining independence in November 1813, the name, States General, was resurrected for a legislature constituted in 1814 and elected by the States Provincial. In 1815, when the Netherlands were united with Belgium and Luxembourg, the States General were divided into two chambers, the First Chamber and the Second Chamber. The members of the first chamber were appointed for life by the king, while the members of the second chamber were elected by the members of the states provincial. The states general resided in The Hague and Brussels in alternate years until 1830, when, as a result of the Belgian Revolution, The Hague became once again the sole residence of the states general, Brussels instead hosting the newly founded Belgian parliament. From 1848 on, the Dutch constitution provides that members of the second chamber be elected by the people at first only by a limited portion of the male population. Universal male and female suffrage exists since 1919, while the members of the first chamber are chosen by the members of the states provincial. As a result, the second chamber became the most important. The first chamber is also called Senate. This however, is not a term used in the constitution. Occasionally the first and second chamber meet in a Verenigde Vergadering joint session, for instance on Prinsjesdag, the annual opening of the parliamentary year, and when a new king is inaugurated. <inaudible> <inaudible> Holy Roman Empire The Holy Roman Empire had the imperial diet Reichstag. The clergy was represented by the independent prince bishops, prince archbishops and prince abbots of the many monasteries. The nobility consisted of independent aristocratic rulers, secular prince electors, kings, dukes, margraves, counts and others. Burghers consisted of representatives of the independent imperial cities. Many peoples whose territories within the Holy Roman Empire had been independent for centuries had no representatives in the imperial diet, and this included the imperial knights and independent villages. The power of the imperial diet was limited, despite efforts of centralization. Large realms of the nobility or clergy had estates of their own that could wield great power in local affairs. Power struggles between ruler and estates were comparable to similar events in the history of the British and French parliaments. The Swabian League, a significant regional power in its part of Germany during the 15th century, also had its own kind of estates, a governing federal council comprising three colleges, those of princes, cities, and knights. Russian Empire In the late Russian Empire the estates were called Soslavyes. The four major estates were, nobility clergy, rural dwellers, and urban dwellers, with a more detailed stratification therein. The division in estates was of mixed nature, traditional, occupational, as well as formal, for example, voting in Duma was carried out by estates. Russian Empire census recorded the reported estate of a person. Catalonia The Parliament of Catalonia was first established in 1283 as the Catalan Courts, Courts Catalanes, according to American historian Thomas Bisson, and it has been considered by several historians as a model of medieval parliament. 
For instance, English historian of constitutionalism Charles Howard McIlwain wrote that the general courts of Catalonia, during the 14th century, had a more defined organization and met more regularly than the parliaments of England or France. The roots of the parliament institution in Catalonia are in the sanctuary and truce assemblies, assemblies de Pau i Treva, that started in the 11th century. The members of the Parliament of Catalonia were organized in the three estates Catalan, Trace Estates. The military estate polygons militars with representatives of the feudal nobility. The ecclesiastical estate ecclesiastica arles with representatives of the religious hierarchy. The royal estate real estate with representatives of the free municipalities under royal privilege the parliament institution was abolished in 1716 together with the rest of institutions of catalonia after the war of the spanish succession topic see also what is the third estate fourth estate fifth estate communalism before 1800 Trifunctional hypothesis Four occupations Asian equivalents Varna Hinduism location specific Prussian estates Estates of the Netherlands Antilles Estates of Brittany The Canterbury Tales the division of society into three estates as one of the key themes A satire of the three estates general Social class Caste Topic. Notes Topic. References Stephen Cree's lecture on The Origins of the French Revolution Notes on France and the Old Regime Giles Constable. The Orders of Society, Chap. 3 of 3 Studies in Medieval Religious and Social Thought Cambridge, New York, Cambridge University Press, 1995, pp. 249-360. Bernhard Jussen, ed. Ordering Medieval Society, Perspectives on Intellectual and Practical Modes of Shaping Social Relations. Trans, by Pamela Selwyn. Philadelphia, University of Pennsylvania Press, 2001. Jackson J. Spielvogel, Western Civilization, West Publishing Co. Minneapolis, 1994 for the English language version of the quote from Abbe Sillas, quoted at http colon slash slash www.magnesium.net slash tilde locutus slash work slash eurohis 2.htm http colon slash slash v .fr slash mothisto slash sillas 2 slash sillas 2.htm for French language original of this quotation. Michael P. Fitzsimmons, The Night the Old Regime Ended, August 4, 1789 and the French Revolution, Pennsylvania State University Press, 2003. ISBN 0-271-02233-7, quoted and paraphrased at https colon slash slash web dot archive dot org slash web slash 20041204105931 slash http colon slash slash www3.uacron.edu slash france slash reviews slash crubba.html